May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, it says in the Gospel today, and to God the things that are of the Lord. Whose image is this? Also we read. Thus we should ask ourselves often this question in respect to our own soul. We are made in the image of likeness of Christ. Ponder this, especially when we are tempted to stain and ruin our soul by sin. Whose image is this? We should then say to ourselves, is this not the likeness of the Lord? A likeness painted with the blood of Christ, an image for which our Saviour gave his life. Should I defile or deform this by sin, God forbid. For in truth, what among all created things except the angels is more beautiful than, and precious than a soul shining brilliantly in a state of grace. Great Saint Catherine of Siena said, could we behold with our corporal eyes a soul in a state of grace, we would see with astonishment that it surpasses in splendor all flowers or stars, the whole world. And there is probably no one who would not wish to die for such exquisite beauty. It is the dwelling of the Blessed Trinity. Christ did not give his life for all the goods and treasures of this earth, but for each human soul individually. And yet many estimate their soul at such little value. The body we estimate nowadays so highly that we take pains to decorate it and keep it alive. And the soul, the image and the likeness of the Lord, we take no interest in. We take no pains to keep it in a state of grace and adorn it with virtues. The gospel today to pay tribute to the lawful government is the duty of justice, which the Spirit of God himself commands us faithfully, faithfully to fulfill. Christ himself paid the customary drachma for himself and Saint Peter. And if the Son of God himself paid the duty in tax, says St. Ambrose, who art thou, O man, that thou wouldst free thyself from it. The government, thou must watch, lest the life of its subjects be a hazard, that their property not be endangered or stolen, that there be security in the highways, peace and harmony, and order be preserved among the citizens, that their temporal welfare be promoted and that the culture will flourish. But look at the situation today in our society, how many state leaders are in a state of grace, how many Catholics. Yet we cannot, however, obey a so-called law which is contrary to God's natural law. For example, the Lord tells us clearly it is wrong to kill the defenseless unborn in the mother's womb. It is wrong against the natural law. Yet many believe in Catholics that we should follow this law of the land because it is a law. We should not even call it a law. Many Catholics, we should follow this law of the land and uphold the choice of the mother, they say. But if we read the Catechism, it says, it is a great sin and a moral evil to procure an abortion. Our um, bishop, the friars incarnated into the the Diocese of Portsmouth with Bishop 
Philip Egan. He said, last, in the last few years, it is now over 50 years since the Abortion Act 1967 came into effect. The British Act is one of the most liberal in the world and since then over 10 million babies have been aborted in the UK. More than now one in four of all pregnancies. The numbers are colossal. The bishop himself calls this, and this is his word, barbarism. Barbarism. The Lord says in the scripture clearly, if you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, we must love the Lord through humble obedience to his commandments. We must do God's will, wake up and stop this sin. If we fall into the stench of sin, are we rendering to the Lord what is due to him? Certainly not. We are thus rendering our prideful disobedience to Satan and his minions. In life and at the moment of death, one reality may remain certain. We must always be in a good standing with the Lord, in a state of sanctifying grace, since our soul can be called into eternity at any moment. How easy it is to offend our Lord and Our Lady by the sins. Have we any idea of the horrendous nature of sin and its consequences? I mentioned before one of the prayers you should be praying every day is for true contrition for your sins, but I would also add something to make it even more precise. Be sorrow for your sins, have this contrition, and for the consequences of your sins. Remember, we will be judged directly at our death, individually by the Lord, but the consequences of our sins will be revealed at the second judgment. So have this sorrow also for the consequences which affect the whole of the mystical body, the church, and the whole balance of the world. What to do then? In reality, we know we are our own worst enemy. These are the things to correct self-love, vanity, sensuality, seek to destroy our soul, that they may have their wicked way. This is the consequence of original sin. It came from hell and it leads to hell. If you live according to the flesh, you shall die, Romans 8. Therefore, die to your inordinate desires so that you will not die from eternal death. This is the root of all of our sins, the greed and the pride, me and my ego. Thus the answer, be holy and hand yourself over to Our Lady. There goes I for the grace of God. We all fall short of God's glory in sin. This is our mission today, now, to be holy. It falls to us, to you in a state of light, God willing, to drag all of these souls living a disordered and sinful lifestyle far from the Lord back into a state of grace by your action as little co-redeemers in the army of the Immaculate. We need to do penance and sacrifice because the sacrifices makes us precisely in the likeness and the image of Christ. Our capacity to sacrifice is what makes us like Christ and our lady. Do penance and sacrifice and be cut to the heart. We all need to be healed. This healing will not come through this perverse immoral lifestyle, but through Jesus Christ and Mary, health of the sick. Nothing then is impossible, we read in the scripture, for the Lord. Mary, 
Dimatri Caridemtris is the key to conversion. Take hold of this key then and turn it sweetly to open the heart of Jesus Christ so that you may always render to the Lord what is due in justice to the Lord. Turn to the weapon of Mary, the most holy rosary in this month of October, which Pope John Paul II said marks the rhythm of our life. Take to heart the words of the friar of the rosary, Padre Pio, saying, Some people are so foolish that they think they can go through life without the help of the Blessed Mother. Love the Madonna, he said, and pray the rosary, for her rosary is the weapon against the evils of the world today. All graces given by the Lord pass through the Blessed Mother. Use then well this chain of salvation, the rosary, then to render God the things that are from the Lord. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>